Hey guys, I am finally here this morning. Oh my gosh, what a journey this morning has been. But I'm finally here to talk about setting trends versus breaking chains. Um, we are living in a society today where where setting trends is the popular thing. You will be you will be able to hear today um, just when you look even on YouTube or Facebook, you will be able to hear the whole um, trending um, um, it's and I looked up the word trending and it said, that 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 is popular and you could invite people to in the moment it's what gets the most clicks the most likes the most um cares and we often think that the most people whoever you can get um at um so whatever video whatever thing you could get the most people into that's what's that's what that's what's most significant and the scary thing is there are lots of people clicking into uh things that are absolute nonsense <laughs> um to my mind because there are there are so many um things that are trending out there that i'm looking at like wh what is this and i heard um i heard uh, something today that was trending i was like why are people watching this we've we to my mind um gone to, um, as a church and as a society, gone to what's trending, what's hot, what's now. And we have totally missed what's kingdom, what's God, what does he want to say? Um, and what's scary is um, we've we brought this idea of trending into the church. Um, so what I mean by that is like, if one person has something and it works, we do it at our church because it'll work there. And if another person has something, okay, we could do that at our church. And, it works there and it becomes it often starts off as a kingdom thing but it becomes a trend because it loses its past um it it loses its power because everybody's doing it because it worked over there we've lost and i grieve the loss of individuality both in our lives and in the church i think we have just been going with trends and we we have not been stopping to ask god what do you want from this is this something that you want or is this something that we've always done we need to break the box of our own understanding. We say lean not to to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight or direct your path depending on what version you read. But I think when you kind of step out of that, uh, step out of the trends and do something really kingdom i think that it can be scary it is easier 
to stay with what's trending. It is easier to stay with what everybody else is doing because like if you don't you might stick out and it might fail and we're all scared of it what if i come out and do something not trending and nobody likes it nobody watches it nobody like everybody laughs at me but what we need to understand is is First of all, we are not here to be trendy. We are here to be all about the kingdom. And I know it's difficult. When I say kingdom, I mean um, the kingdom of God, which is, I think, um, the place where God dwells the place that is his. And, and we are called to exemplify his kingdom. We are not called to follow trends. We are not called to be popular. Although, funnily enough, if it's really God, people will follow. And if it's not, people can tell, but you won't It'll just be empty. There are so many people on YouTube that I love YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. You're so awesome. But there are so many people on YouTube that are just doing what's tr trending. But I'm, but I'm, um, I'm asking you. I'm challenging you. That's a better word. I'm challenging you to not do what's trending. Do what you're called to do and people will follow. And if they don't, well, then God will bring the increase. And it is so much more important. We often look at the crowds of people, but God looks at... Um, the soul of that one person. God looks at the individual person. We look at the crowds. It is, it is not as important to God that you have 50,000 or a million followers or a million subscribers as it is that you have six subscribers, but you affect those six lives that you have every week that watch your, your sermon. Um, I don't have many subscribers. I don't put for subscribers. I yes, I want people to hear the word that God has God has um, put in in my mouth or the purpose that he's called me to, but I've never uh, pushed for subscribers or whatever. Um, I always say that people can subscribe to me if they want to or whatever, but I never push people to do that because people know what affects them and, and what they gravitate to or what restores them or whatever. And I'm okay with being that preacher may not be me. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So although I want to go to grow my platform, although I want to do all that, I will not sell my soul sell my soul or change the message of Christ to do that. I I want to be a kingdom preacher. I want to be a preacher that preaches to the, to the lost and to let people understand that God is for everybody, not just for Christians. Christ didn't die for Christians. Christ died for the world. And I think because of who we are, we like to see the butts in the seats. 
But the butts in the seats don't say anything about your effectiveness. There are several people that have several friends and several likes and whatever, and they talk about nonsense or or something insulting or put people down or talk about people's down, downfall. And but um, but the Lord is concerned about Christ and him crucified. And, and it's concerning to me that I see the church trying to be more trendy, more with it, more whatever, rather than being about kingdom. Now, uh, saying that, I'm not saying that the church has to be dry and boring and old. We can be innovative and still kingdom-minded, but we have to make sure that this innovation is God's innovation, something that God is doing and that he's putting in us. And sometimes uh, when you're a part of a church or when you're in a church for so long, you begin to coast. You begin to say, oh, this is working, so let's not change this. This is this is something that we could do. Let's, let's not change it. But the Lord is saying, I need you to stop what you think you know and go with what? I know, I know. He said, I need you to stop what you think you know and go with what I know, I know. Because the Lord just totally wants to break open. He wants to show people different ways of doing business, innovative ways of preaching for my pastors out there, innovative ways of doing worship. I I see all kinds of innovation coming from the church. If we would just drop what we think we know to what he knows he knows. You know, the scary thing is, Every trend, I believe, starts off with a good intention. But the intention of it gets mired in whether people like it or whatever. And we kind of lose God in because we've been doing it for 10 years. Let's do it again. Uh, not necessarily, because although his character and his nature is the same, although he, he never changes, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but his innovation and his best, his methods do. So one thing could be started for one reason and it continues for another it continues because it works um at one season but one season it's the method is kind of uh run its course and it's okay to admit where uh where a method has run its course because god hasn't called us to be robots God hasn't called us to be clones. He calls he called us to walk in our uniqueness. And the thing about trends is they start um, for one reason, but they finish because um, they can no they continue because it seems to work. But God has so much more. Oh my gosh, I see oh I see pastors doing all kinds of innovative things to preach 
the gospel. I see churches um, doing things in innovative ways that 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 we can't even imagine. But we need to uh, release our mind. We need to um, release our mind to what we think we know, to what he knows he knows. And and when you step when you step out of the norm, it will feel weird. And he'll be like, and he's like, don't worry about it feeling weird. He's like, I'll, he says, I'll be with you in the weirdness. <laughs> he said, it will feel uncomfortable, but I will be with you in the weirdness. He'd be like, he'd be like, uh, He wants us to be his voice. He wants us to work. He wants to work through us, but our mindsets and our ways of doing things and ways of being is stopping is stopping him from doing what he wants to do. Um, let me. Let me say it this way. God cannot be stopped by anything but our mindset. God cannot be stopped by anything but our mindset. Yes, he's God. Yes, he can do, he can do anything he wants to do. But sometimes our mindset or our limitations that we put on ourselves and on him are the one that's stopping us. Lord, we, pr we pray for, we say, God, we say, God, move how you want to move, do what you want to do, do everything. But we don't really need that. <laughs> We mean, Lord, do what you want to do, but within the parameters of uh, 11.30 to, to 1, or how long our church services are. Like, we say, say what you want to say, but don't go too far because people may, may leave our church. May leave the church, but... I'm telling you, when you really step out on what God wants you to do, and and people, not everybody will like it, but the remnant will stay. And the people that are meant to be blessed and fed by your ministry, by your business, by your children, by everything, they will be blessed and fed by it. And everyone has, has a chain that they can break. When I say breaking a chain, I don't, I don't mean just blind eyes, deaf ears, all of that. I mean even chains of educational disparity between cultures. I mean chains of financial barrenness. I mean change of chains of depression, I mean chains of illness, I mean everyone has a chain that they can break, that God has called them to break. Everyone has a voice and in your voice is the chain that you can break. Or he's called, he's called you, you can't break anything, but he's called you to help him break. So you you think you have you have a wonderful smile or the gift of a sense of humor? Well, you with that you could break some through you God can use you to break somebody out of the chain of depression. Um, I was watching Mike Todd the other day, and he went up to a gentleman and said, God has gifted you with a smile. 
And I was thinking about that gentleman. That smile could be used as a chain breaker for depression and discouragement. When that smile is turned on a person, they can go forward in their purpose and who knows what they can do because you used your chain breaking gift to push them into purpose. God has called you to be his kingdom ambassador. And the, and by keeping with the trend and by keeping with what, you, what you're supposed to do, what you feel you're supposed to do, you're actually blocking God from doing what he wants to do. He can, over, he can override you and sometimes he does. But sometimes he doesn't. Your mindset is preventing that chain from being broken. Your mindset is preventing uh, you from coming out of that chain or whatever. Change your mindset and it will be the catalyst to catapult you into your destiny. And the Lord says, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Lord is calling us not to set trends because trends are here today and there tomorrow. And, and sometimes they come back or sometimes they don't. Uh, in the 70s, bell bottoms happened and afros happened, and then they went out for a while, and then they're coming back, you see. People with bell-bottom bell pants, you see um, people with afros. Friends are, um, are temporary, t temporary, but the Lord has called us to break chains. And when a chain is broken, it's forever. When I when I mean by chain, I mean something something that is binding you from living the life that God has called you to live. Chain it a chain is anything that is preventing you or binding you from living the life that God wants you to live. God wants you to live in abundance. When I mean abundance, I mean shalom. I, I mean shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. He wants you to live like that. And he's called you to be a chain breaker. And he's given you a the certain tools to be a chain breaker in your life. And he's, he wants to rise up. He wants the church to rise up and not be trendy, but be a chain breaker. He, he wants to download new things that you have never thought of before for your life. And he wants you to use those things for his kingdom. But first of all, you have got to take the limits off. Those limits or those, I can't do this or whatever, that's what's stopping you from being all that God has called you to be. Like, what's stopping you from being all, all that's called you to be is not money. It's not any kind of resources. First of all, you have to change your mindset. And when you change your mindset, it changes your, your outlook. And when you change your outlook, you eventually, you eventually get the resources to you um, to cause you to live in your purpose. But first, it's a mindset change. I, I, I can't tell you all that I've been seeing 
I've been seeing people using different tools for worship, different tools for business. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I see, I see people pastoring in groups. I see, like, instead of just one pastor, a group of people with a similar vision, and they pastor together. I see, I see all kinds of unique ways of doing ministry. As long as it's about Christ and him crucified, you've got his approval. And as long as your ministry is about Christ and, and getting the gospel out there and healing the sick or the broken in, in different ways, that's, that's all he needs. And the thing about um, setting trends versus breaking chains, I said before, when you set a trend, it's temporary. But when you break a chain, it's forever. And what I'm talking about is going outside the box. It might be scary because what, when you're doing that, he may say, you know what? I don't want church this Sunday. I want you to go uh, with your congregation to uh, Tim Hortons, which is a donut place here, and just and just um and just buy everyone a free Tim Hortons or you know whatever he may ask you to do something weird like that innovation will require you to step out of your comfort zone into a bit of weirdness innovation will require you to step out of your comfort zone and into a bit of weirdness and it won't and it won't be all right but the benefits will far outweigh your fear at the beginning innovation when you step out to do what god has called you to do it won't feel right but it if you move past your fear in faith it will affect so many lives And and because there there are people in in regular churches right now, and you and you and you're wondering why you feel so dis, dissatisfied, dissatisfied, and why you're seeing this and why you're seeing that, because you you are not a trendsetter, you are a chain breaker. You don't set trends for people to follow. You, you break chains that will catapult people into their tomorrow, into their new day. God has called you to break those chains. And I know it's scary, believe me. It's scary all the time for me when I'm sitting here alone in my office and preaching. You would think that I have a whole crowd of people. But it's just me in my office and it's scary because you don't know if anybody's listening, but when I look on YouTube or Facebook or the and the comments, oh my gosh. One time I got a, a comment for, from somebody in India that said I'm in a nondescript room and I'm I'm just here by myself but your sermon is carrying me through so that is why I do it I I do it for the one see we we measure our effectiveness by the numbers but he me me measures our effectiveness by the one person. Uh, like I said before, I don't have many subscribers, but I've got many emails from 
the six people um i get m many emails from people that says thank you from family members who I don't know um, are watching that says thank you for that. Um, just from, from several people that says thank you. Wow, that really helped me. And, and these are from strangers and family members. So you don't know when you when you speak a word of encouragement when you do when you walk in purpose, how many people you, you will be affecting. And we could get caught up in how many numbers and how many subscribers. And I'm not saying that stuff is not important. It is, but it's not, it's not as important as God getting what he gets. You look at the millions you affect, you're not affected. God's looking at the one person that you do affect. And that's what I learned a long time ago. Not to be discouraged because it's only seven people. Because the seven people that I have could go out there of the words that I said and change their lives, change their families. And eventually change the communities and change the world. Whereas the 10,000 people that I have could just do nothing. See, it's not about how many people you have. It's about what those people do with the words that God has put it in you. See, it's not about the number of people. It's about uh, how how potent and how effective your words are uh, to change your life and to change other people's lives. And if it's really from God in his time, he will bring the increase. So that's why I don't. Don't say after every video, subscribe to me, subscribe to me, subscribe to me. Because people know what affects them. People know what they want to subscribe to. I don't have to tell them, oh, subscribe to me. If, if they want to, they will. If they don't, they won't. My mission and my vision is to be a voice for a generation. Be a voice of truth, be a voice of love, be a voice of understanding, be a voice of compassion. That is my mission. My mission is not to get as many subscribers that I can. My mission is if I get six people or seven people or 20 people or 100 people or 1,000 people watch to watch this video, what will they do? with what they've heard. Will they sit on it? Will they do something with it? Will they change their families and change their communities and change the world? Okay, guys, I will see you next week. And I'd like to thank all of those of you who have um, subscribed to me and listened to me every week. Although I said I don't push for subscribers, I don't because people know what they can, what touches them and who they want to follow and who they want to subscribe to. But I am saying thank you. And you are welcome to subscribe if you want to. Uh, the content on this channel is always kingdom-based. Uh, and I'm not perfect. I try to be as authentic as I possibly can. But it's always kingdom-based. And I, I spend time in prayer and time in thought every week over these messages because I want more than anything, people to take something home 
and live uh, the way that God has called them to live. I want them to be stirred, to be the God kind of person that he has called them to be. And I pray that he raise up a generation that won't set trends, tr that won't set trends that will last a few minutes or a year, but will break chains, be the voice of, a, of the chain breaker to last forever. We cannot break chains in our, in our own strength, but through the Lord, we can break chains. He's called us to break chains. Jesus, when Jesus was in ministry, he didn't set trends. He broke chains. He broke chains of people that were illness, uh, that were full of illness, physical, spiritual, mental. He broke all those chains. And he's called us to be the voice, to be his voice of a chain breaker. And the funny thing about Jesus is he didn't, he didn't set out to set tr trends, but by the end, people were following him like crazy. People, people know what's authentic and what's fake. And my whole thing is, I endeavor to be authentic. I endeavor to tell you the truth in love. I endeavor to to ex expose the kingdom how the Lord has given it to me. I'm not perfect. I will never be perfect. But I'm just his. And he's just used me in a in a wonderful and unique way to spread his gospel to people that Jesus died, Jesus rose again, and he loves them. And sometimes the trends we set, they got started because they worked, but now they're no, no longer working and, and God will be, God will say, what do you need to change to, to to get on board with what I'm doing now? There are ways that God wants to move in different churches, but they are too set in what what they think should be there. They're too set in their four song in their prayer four songs, preach and then go home. God is so much bigger than our perceptions, than our limitations. He has no limitations. He's infinite, and he wants us to understand uh, the trends that we set um, are, are temporary, but the chains that we, we help him break are forever and there are so many people in in pain so many people in distress so many people in lack so many people living below what god has called them to live that there 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 are enough for all of us we don't need to be jealous of this person and that person we just need to walk in our purpose And one, one, another thing too, trends lack power. Tr trends lack power, where chains exude power. Like there's no power in a trend, but there, there is power in breaking chains. There's power in the name of Jesus and he breaks chains.
No, I I want to change one thing that I said. I said, um, uh, trends lack power and change exudes power. No, change don't exude power. Change don't have the power over you. Only God has the power over you. But breaking chains requires the, the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus to do that. When I say a chain, I mean just a um, situation that has you bound, that has you locked. And God wants to set you free right now from those chains. All you have to do is call out to him and he is so willing to help you. He is so willing to set you free, but he wants to hear you call out to him. You can be the start of breaking your own chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, 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 break every chain. I, I see people just, um, just, uh, doing menial jobs and, and just, um, coasting. The Lord hasn't called us to coast. The Lord hasn't called us to coast. He's called us to innovate. Um, because you, uh, when something works, the when a method works for doing ministry, we sometimes have the tendency to coast, and and um, he's saying, come out of coasting. He's saying, come out of coasting. And in, come into creating. Come out of coasting and into creating. He's, he's given you creativity. He's given you the tools you need. He's given you everything that you need. He's saying, Stop living in fear. I'm with you. Come out of coasting and into creating. And when I say creating, it could mean in every aspect. It doesn't have to be songs. It doesn't have to be stories. It doesn't have to be anything. Creativity is anything that you build. Creativity is anything that you build, whether you build your knowledge or whether you build a, a structure, a financial structure. He said creativity can apply to anything. You could say, well, I'm a business person. I'm not very creative. Well, you, you built a business plan that's creative. You, you built, you, you built a business that's creative. Um, you could say I'm a mom, but I'm not very creative. I'm just looking at, after my kids. Well, you came up with a way to teach that child instead of yelling at them and whatever you, you, you found a way with God to, to make that a teaching moment and you didn't yell at them. You taught them and even, even in parenting. You will learn along the way how to be a more effective parent. You, you learned what ways with your kids were ineffective and what ways were, were effective. See, it's, 
I, I I don't think the world is about good or bad people. I think effective people or ineffective people. Well, I want to be an effective person, person, and the Lord has called me to be an effective person. And I'm so grateful. And he's given me effective strategies to walk up my purpose. Like when, when, when Facebook and YouTube said I couldn't do the song thing anymore, I just had to cha change to a more effective strategy where I don't use music anymore physically, but I can make reference to a song. You see, I think um, the church is is resistant to change, and I think sometimes that could be a problem. And not only the church, but I think people are resistant to change. I think people have the misconception that if something works for now, it'll work forever. But no. It won't work forever. It works for that moment. Some things. And you have been in things that were designed to work for that moment, but they're not working not working now. And the Lord is saying to you, change your strategy. Change your strategy. He's like, there's a strategy for every struggle. And all you have to do is train your strategy. And changing your strategy is not easy. It's hard. As I said before, it's all about changing your mindset. When you change your mindset, you can change your life. Thank you, Lord. And remember, your effectiveness is not about the crowd necessarily it's about the it starts with the one your effectiveness is not necessarily about the crowd it starts with the one so what one person can you be effective can you affect today in in a positive way anyway guys i'll see you later Bye.